I'm Donnie. I'm owner and founder of RIP Paranormal Investigation. Today we're bringing an episode where we're actually interviewing one of my sponsors. Um, we'd like to welcome Justin to our show. He's an uh, actual founder owner of uh, Northwest Dream Challenge, truck racing, and other motorsports. Justin, would you like to tell us a little about, about yourself? Well, I, I started North Stream Truck Challenge, just kind of on a whim, looking for something new to do, um, something neat for the community and neat for the racers. Uh, it's a total different change of pace from tough trucks or pro arena trucks or the quote unquote iron truck challenges that have gone on in the area. Um, I myself have been a pro arena truck racer for many years and decided that uh, I was tired of having problems with promoters not doing what they were saying they were going to do. There's there's a lot of good promoters out there, but the end result was you'd get 10 hours from home and what you were told wasn't what was going to happen. So I decided I'd start this and make it a family-friendly event and uh, kind of make it fun for the racers and profitable of course yeah yeah I, I personally know justin because i actually raced for one of his events about what was it three months ago yeah right about right, three months right ago right. i actually raced one of his events down in uh, sublimity oregon which was a pretty fun event i had a great time i got to work on track and stuff beforehand yeah. I, I put you to work <laughs> <laughs> And then Mr. Wallwasher over here didn't bother to show up. Yeah, well, well, we'll we'll get him there next year. <laughs> I think I'm uh, feeling sick. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, Justin's been one of my sponsors for all episode or, or all eight episodes of my paranormal show, which I really thank you for that, man. You like to help us. It's the least I can do. And like we got this special event coming up this weekend. I take off Saturday, and we're doing a Honda road trip all the way over to Eastern Oregon. And we just found out we got this really cool indoor location that's a saloon and hotel that we got full access to that we're investigating. Well, I hope the drinks are free. Uh, <laughs> well, no. you know, water is always free. So. Well, well, yeah. A good blue dolphin can't hurt. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you personally believe in the paranormal? Oh, yeah. There's, there's been stuff I've seen that I can't explain. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, you know, Justin's one of our sponsors, and if it wasn't for him, my other sponsors, there ain't no way that we could do this road trip coming up this weekend. Not at all. Um, I'm really li excited, looking forward to it, oh, especially that it. indoor stuff. It'll be really fun. Um, well, I gotta say, there's stuff I've seen that I can't explain. I'm not going to confront it. <laughs> well, there's no, no two ways around it. I've seen it. Turn around and went the other way. I, I will say that you guys have the uh, goal to uh, take a further look at things that are unexplainable. And I don't know. That's, that's not me. So. Yeah, for me, I've been doing it for... October 31st is going to be 14 years for me. I've actually been chasing the paranormal, and I've actually took schooling on it. I just recently graduated from my demonologist class, so I've been doing, I've been trying to talk Ryan and actually going out to actually make sure more interesting and start going into the demonic stuff, which he's going to get a little taste of it this weekend coming up, because one of the places we're actually going is supposedly haunted by a demon which is going to be exciting for me because i'm a i use a ouija board and stuff so i communicate with him that way and i'm getting ryan used to it he's starting to get up there that's a whole different ball game it is and i mean you go you go from curtains moving to stuff being thrown at you that's or or further furthermore someone possessed in, in that realm yeah, and I don't have near as much experience as Donnie. I've only been doing it for, on a serious level, about four and a half years now. But, so, 
I don't have near the experience that he does, so I'm still, like I said, trying to take that one foot that's already in the door and gently nudging that other <laughs> foot in through the door. So, But, no, I'm really looking forward to this trip we've got. There's some really good locations that are coming. So. Yeah, and then, uh, just so you're on board, in the September I'm actually starting to do my... Um, underwater par paranormal investigations I'm actually and that sounds really exciting <laughs> i'm i'm way into shipwrecks like the the history side of it really really hits home for me i'm 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 not going to say i'm a history buff but it's intriguing to me to look at what's gone on in the past and the paranormal side of it but i'm sure it's there it's got to be there yeah we got uh picked up a new sponsor, Hydra Sports out of Kaiser. It's a dive and travel shop that's actually sponsored me for all my dive gear for the weekend dives for the underwater paranormal side of it. Right on. Uh, Ryan's think I'm nuts, but. Where uh, are you going down with him? Um, I kind of have this thing that'll kind of make me rise back up, you know, so. <laughs> well, you notice I look down too, it's okay. I mean, if you need a buoy to like keep him out there, sure, but I mean. <laughs> I'll probably be the guy that's on the land making sure he's okay. <laughs> Until he makes me go down there, but we'll see. Well, I hope you guys got good radios. No, we do. We're going to be getting all that stuff, so it'll be really nice. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, it, to getting back under the water and stuff and doing some of these shipwrecks out on the coast. And got a couple of Honda Lakes we're going to. Uh, should be a heck of a good time. I'm excited because it's something that nobody else has done before. And that's a whole oh, yeah. territory, so. Well, and just imagine how many of these have been explored privately, but not open to the public. And all, all of this is probably in public waters, yeah. which anyone could go there, but no one's shed light on what has gone on or what's there, which that's pretty darn cool that you guys have the opportunity to do so. Well, I'm like you, I'm a major history person too. Well, I'm, I am a history buff. So. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with it. I, I, so that's I, what intrigues me about that and even the normal paranormal, like when we're, you know, going to these old buildings or old ghost towns or these places that people haven't been in years, it's just the history is what really intrigues me too, so. Yeah. I mean, think of finding a wreck that happened 150 160 years ago you know i mean that's crazy oh yeah well it's like the the tunnels in pendleton i don't know if you guys have explored those much at all yeah. it's pretty pretty publicized pretty emphasized for the public to buy a ticket to go through it's pretty darn neat still um i'm I'm sure there's some aspects of that as a good portion of the tunnels have been closed that would be neat to explore also. Might be something else to check into. Hey. It's like I've been researching uh, wrecks for about the last four months now. And the uh, oldest wreck I'm going to be diving on is from 1860. And it actually killed all 16 passengers on the ship when it went out. It left out of Tilmuck Head and crashed and killed all 16 of them. So to actually go under there, because like Justin was saying, you know, just like a regular diver, you're going diving these shipwrecks, but you ain't looking for the paranormal stuff. No, so an no, everyday no, diver is just you're going to see what's there. Yeah, they're just going to check it out. They want either the treasures or the to see what's yeah, just see what's there. So I thought I'd take it a step further, and I'm actually taking down recorders to try to pick up sounds off the ship, taking down underwater cameras, going to videotape the whole paranormal investigation underwater. <laughs> right on. That'll be interesting. Should be pretty cool. But yeah, like, uh, do you happen to have a website that the TV viewers can actually go and look you up to see like, when your events and stuff are coming up? As as far as myself, no, but uh, for the company, um, the company name is Lone Entertainment, so it's L-O-N-E-E-N-T-E-R-T-A-I-N-M-E-N-T 
com. That will bring you to upcoming events for my promotion company. I haven't put on events that I'll be racing at with that, but I will probably put a link to my Facebook page on there in in the near future. Right on. Do you have any events coming up the rest of this year? Or? Uh, nothing so far for this year. We're going to just kind of lay low. Um, it's It was a founding year for the company, and I think we had a great success with what we did, but don't want to push my luck for the first year out of the gate. So we're gonna we're gonna lay low. Probably come back and hit it with two for next year, though. I don't know if they'll both be extreme truck challenges or a extreme truck challenge and a mud drags. We'll just kind of take it as it comes, kind of see where everything lays. Um, Better get the samurai fixed. Yeah, one of these days when I got yeah. time. <laughs> The uh, I have a lot of interest in the mud drags, so I'm heavily looking in that direction. Um, one neat thing with sublimity is the fact that everything that we do has to be above ground, which means it's a more consistent course. There's a solid bottom, so the guys with 29-inch tires don't have to worry about getting stuck and not being able to get out <laughs> the end. But the other side of it, it's on time, so however long it time takes to get to the end of the track, whether you win or lose, you're having fun doing it. So, mm. Like I said, I had a great time when I raced for your event, I had even though I broke on a second night, which <laughs> I really didn't get pissed off over it. I mean, I broke it, so what? I'll fix it and be ready for next year to join well, your event that, again. There's not every day somebody tries to drive over a rock the size of the table in front of us. <laughs> Is that what happened? Mm, I don't know if the story comes out. It, I don't it, know if it, it may have been, it may been a combination of all of the above. <laughs> rock, <laughs> mud, jumps. I think what happened is after I came out of that mud hole, at the end of it is when the tranny finally snapped on it. But uh, hey, it's fixable. I'll be back <laughs> out next year. Just just a part. It's like get told all the time. If there's no photos, it didn't happen. So you better bring up some photos in this shot. Well, I do have the footage from the first night. I don't have any from the breaking. Well, that's okay. Footage mm -hmm. is proof. <laughs> I got plenty of photos from the second night. I just wouldn't let the wife post them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see people see me break. <laughs> But hey, at least well, I drove out under my own power after the race. You I did. still made it off the course. You did, you did. I was going to say, I think I saw one guy actually have to get pulled out by a tractor, yeah. if I remember right, one of the first nights. Yeah, he's one of our friends. He gave her a valiant effort, though. Oh, good grief. Are you kidding you, you me? Can't, Absolutely. You can't hit the boulder off school wide open. Yeah. <laughs> just does not end well. That was one of those where you're just like... <sighs> well, as the promoter... And the guy that's staging you up. What did I tell you? Did I say, go out, have fun? Yep. Be safe. Be safe. <laughs> said the same words to him. He said, now I'm going for it. I said, okay, have fun. <laughs> and he went for it. <laughs> he did. He had fun. It was short-lived, but fun. That's, yeah. that's the important thing. Um, as a racer myself, it, my big concern is getting hurt, honestly. I, I push the safety side of things probably a little bit too hard. But we all have lives we live outside of, let's go race. Let's go have a good time. Let's go win some money. Let's go win a trophy. Five years down the road, you want to be able to pick up your kid the safety side of it can't go far enough. I and mean, that's, I, I don't know how many times I've been at events where there's a bigger contest. It's like, oh man, I just cringe. You watch, you watch a guy go out in a stock truck and he skies it out and he hits the ground. And you're like, is he awake? <laughs> Did it knock him out? Hey. Did he break his back? Did she break her back? It, it, 
it happens, and it happens so quick you don't know what what happened. But the the safety side of it, I push pretty hard, and want to see everybody. Honestly, I want to see everybody at the end of the night. I want to see them drive their truck onto the trailer and haul it home and wave goodbye as they go out the gate. See you tomorrow. <laughs> That's not always the fact. I mean, the accidents happen and things get broken and they're not able to drive on, but by golly, I sure want to see them walking next to their truck telling me, yep, keep pushing it forward. We're almost on the trailer. <laughs> hey. Yeah, I did the uh, tough truck racing from 2000 till about 2005. And it's like, I don't know, for me, it's like, you wanna go out and put on a good show for the audience. But my Ford that I was racing, I put on a good show, but it ended up breaking my five-point harness. Holy cow. Knocked me out, split my helmet. And I came to after Paramex, they gave me the smell and salt and stuff. And I'm like, first question I asked was, how's my truck? <laughs> but when you're actually sitting sitting over, like laying down on the passenger side truck and you actually sit up and you see your engine or your windshield used to be, and you're like, oh crap, maybe I just hit that one just a little too hard. Oh, yeah. But yeah, <coughs> I know there's guys out there like, you know, they want to go out and put it on a show because people's paying the money to come out and watch entertainment. So they want some kind of wrecks because even my samurai when I was racing, it's like you hear people flip it, flip it, flip it. You know, people's cheering for you to actually wreck your crap. Well, they're cheering for it because they're not the one inside of it. Yeah, and they ain't the one fixing it. Exactly. Yeah, or, the... or paying the cost of, hey, let's roll this and see what happens. Yeah. I don't know. It was pretty funny watching the samurai go and then playing the speed racers. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to say, my announcer was, he, he has an amazing sense of humor. He, he will play. Wheels on the bus go round and round. He'll play Speed Racer. I've heard him play a bunch of Barney songs. <laughs> he yelled at me. other song he played. That was well, so he terrible. yelled at me one time as I was sitting on the start line. I had a seat that sat really low in my truck. He yelled. He goes, get that guy a Portland Yellow Book. He needs to sit up so he can sit see over the dash. <laughs> He's like, does he even have a driver's license yet? I was 25 at the time, but hey, it's all good. Yeah, I think Ryan was thinking about the Oompa Loompa song. That's oh, what it was. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it was. But now you know, me and Justin really had planned out that he needs somebody spraying for mosquitoes. <laughs> and that's why my samurai smoked so much, I was actually like killing mosquitoes during yeah. races for yeah. him. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. There's plenty of skeeters in yeah, there. sublimity. <laughs> if that's what you're doing, then by all means, keep it up. <laughs> I still got mosquito bites from <laughs> camping trip like weeks ago. Are you kidding me? Yeah, there's too many of them guys. Well, they'll get them all fixed up this weekend. We've got the smoker tractors and monster trucks and truck bowls going on at Sublimity. Well, that's right. It's the Harvest Festival this weekend. Yep. And I just realized that. And that's the day that we're taking off. No. Yeah. Well, we could always leave. <clears throat> Get you guys some behind the scenes stuff there. <laughs> <laughs> so, gotta ask, since you said you're a racer, what is your favorite kind of racing to either put on or do? I, mean, I know you said you do a few things like the mud drags, tough trucks, that kind of stuff. So, my, my favorite racing to do, it's technically not head to head but it's called Chicago style truck racing. It's a loop track, so it's an oval track. And the opponents sit diagonally across from each other on the oval. It is a mirror image track, so if you had a whoop to start, and then a big jump, and then a double jump, and you come around the end, it starts over. And it is a one and a half lap race. You finish back at the opponent's start line. I've um, never heard of that. Yeah, it, I've never heard of that. It is as obvious win as could be, um, but it's still timed. You're racing the clock, so it's not head to head. 
It's all in the start, though. The, the pro arena level of racing is very competitive, very close matched. Here in the Northwest, I can say we have the fastest trucks in the nation. Years ago, there was a motorsports company, I'm not going to say their name, did a national challenge where they took the top 10 trucks from the East Coast and the top 10 trucks from the West Coast and they met them in Vegas. And by saying Vegas, anybody that follows anything of the monster truck realm will know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, there was no competition. The 10 trucks from the West Coast were one through 10 in the ranking and the East Coast were 11 through 20. I, I will say I compete in the most competitive realm of pro arena racing. And when it comes down to Chicago style, it is cutthroat. <laughs> if you miss the green light by a half a second, you might as well just pull off the track and park. Because by the time you come around to the finish line and you look back over, the guy's coming back over the next set of jumps on his brakes, stopping and waving at you saying, hey, I won. <laughs> and if you're unfortunate like me and you break an axle in the first round of racing when you're halfway around the track you start hearing this noise behind you through your helmet you're like what is that noise you keep driving for all you got and you come around to your finish line and you stop and you look back over your shoulder and your competitor was nice enough to follow you the other halfway around the track <laughs> Just to give you a thumbs up for saying, hey, you know, you gave it all you had. Nice try. You lost. <laughs> so do you think uh, Sublime might be a big enough arena to actually it try is, something like that? It is definitely a big enough arena to try something like that. Um, the Tacoma Dome was a common one for running into Chicago style racing. They built some amazing tracks there over the years. I found myself on my roof helicoptering across the concrete at one point in time. Um, but with Sublimity, the track is 400 feet long. Doesn't look it. When they set it up for the Harvest Festival, the pulling track is 300 feet long. There's a lot of dirt out the end of the arena. And I utilized some of that space with the Northwest, Northwest Extreme Truck Challenge. Um, a lot more of it can, can be utilized and still fully visible from all of the grandstands. Uh, it's just over 150 feet wide. So it's plenty wide enough for doing just about anything you want to do in there. It, it makes for a good monster truck show. It makes for a good racing course. makes for a heck of a rodeo arena. If you haven't ever been to the San Am Canyon Stampede, yeah. it's, it's, it's a great rodeo arena. Um, I look at it, there's not much that you can't do there. And I fully intend to utilize that facility as much as I can. It's my hometown. I live in Staten. And I have amazing support from the community for whatever I choose to do, whether it be a rodeo or, or a truck race or a monster truck show or a concert. It's all good. The, the community backs community events. That's one neat thing about where I live. Well, we're going to have some uh, TV viewers thinking. What about side by sides? Are you going to do any kind of? So I've got I've I've got a lot of interest from guys with side by sides. I'd like to see the female interest from side by sides. We got to keep it co-gender. Um, there there's pro arena there's female pro arena racers out there. I I would like to see the side by side sport blow up. There. Everybody I talked to, they went out and bought a side-by-side -side for going to the dunes. Okay, what do you do at the dunes? Jump them. Race them. There we go. So, racing, 
jumping. Let's do it. That'd be interesting. I actually would. You look at a side by side from factory production. It is built with a ridiculously stout cage, insane suspension, an ungodly amount of power. That's a race machine to me. That's not a let's go to the dunes and drive around and look at the seagull. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got to say, I agree with you. There's some times where we did some wheeling functions, and there were some people that brought out side-by-sides, and I was pretty impressed just stock how well they handle and do, and, I mean, some of the stuff they did to them. Oh, yeah. Well, and beyond that, I mean, you look at all the uh, adder... Adder, power adder options and suspension adder options and safety adder options. You can build something that could go race NASCAR in a heartbeat out of a side by side with with the internet. Just um, it wouldn't cost you that much, I don't think. I mean, if you look at the price tag on a side by side versus all the adders, <laughs> that's crazy. I didn't think it was that. Competitive, it, it is. It, it's a very active environment. Um, they've kind of taken over the realm for four-wheelers, in my view. I think I'll just stick to my Samurai. Well, your Samurai basically is a adult side-by-side. Side side. Side. <laughs> like I don't want to say adult, but an, a, a little bit bigger side-by-side, side basically. I've seen it go down side by side roads and trails. Well, the thing the thing that I have to laugh at the hardest, and I laugh apologizing. <laughs> I got a phone call from an older gentleman <coughs> with a farm all M. He called to see what time to come weigh his tractor in with the Northwest Extreme Truck Challenge. It's something I will fight probably for the life of the event or any time doing an event at Sublimity. Any time you do something at Sublimity, everyone thinks that it's the Harvest Festival. It's not, and we're gonna do more events there, but I felt so bad because he was so excited the Harvest Festival moved to June. It didn't. <laughs> oh, do they let tractors in the so with Sublimity Harvest Festival, they do uh, monster trucks, stock trucks, and farm tractor poles. And the farm tractor poles are typically on Sunday. This this guy was just so excited that he was going to get the pole on Friday night. I felt horrible telling him that this is not truck and tractor poles. <laughs> <laughs> so we might still have to do a truck and tractor pull event but we'll be very careful in our advertising with it to make sure that it is clear that this is not the Sublimity Harvest Festival. It's just held at the facility. Big letters at the bottom, this is not Sublimity Harvest Festival. Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was crushed when I, when I asked him if it could go over two foot tall rocks and through a foot deep mud pit. <laughs> it was not a happy caller. Well, it's like we just, I just watched my first actual, I mean, I'm not truck pole, but I've seen a few of those, but we went to the one in, I think it was Rick Real, and they actually had lawnmowers doing poles. Oh, were they pulling lawnmowers there? Yeah. yeah. They had like, I mean, they weren't like, let's just take my John Deere down there. They were, were like. Well built, modified. Yeah. Like lawnmower that would probably go faster than any of the cars down on the road out there. <laughs> but yeah, it was crazy. I was like, I was like, Donnie. They actually race lawnmowers? Like, yeah. Oh, no. The, there is such a thing as racing lawnmowers also. Learn they, something new every day. They, <laughs> they pull the mower deck off. They put motorcycle engines in them, lower them down, put wow. big wide tires on them, circle track. It's, it's pretty cool to watch. I did see a snowmobile race once on, like, actual, they oh. put, like, the tracks oh, on them or whatever they put on there. That's, that's cool, though. I mean... Just the wide variety of being that you can do. Uh, motors, motorsports is still yet to be discovered. Uh, there's no end to it. And you look, you look at some of these guys with. Uh, I I was dumbfounded when the tuner cars started coming out. It's like rice rockets. Yep, I use the phrase. 
is what it is. Yeah, speaking about uh, lawnmower racing, I kind of seen something on Facebook about the Salem Indoor winter stuff. They're supposed to be having one of the events for actual lawnmower racing where it's on the old track, which uh, carts and everything race on the indoor stuff. That'd be cool. Oh, yeah. So if you actually want to see that live, you need to go get on their website and check that out. I'm sure we'll be there this year. Hey. Uh, I, I believe it's the Welch family that puts that on here in Salem. Um, I was pretty impressed by some of those little lawnmowers. That well, well, back to the pulling side of it, there there used to be, and they they don't do it sublimity, but I know they do it elsewhere. Um, there is a modified lawn tractor class, where it is one thousand cc and above. And if if you if you couldn't see the track and you heard the noise. You wouldn't know that what you were hearing was an actual lawnmower going down the track pulling a sled. And I have a friend that has two in a shipping container that he hasn't found a place to race them at or pull them at, as we're speaking of pulling. Um, one has a 1,400cc Harley motor in it. And I don't know what the other one is. It's way over the top. I think it's got a V6 in it. Holy cow. <laughs> it's pretty impressive for what people build for different avenues of motorsports. And it's like we, we've talked about your Samurai a little bit. I, I've got a Jeep that has a dragster motor in it. Um, I race against a guy that has uh, alcohol-injected big block in his pro arena truck. The sky's the limit when you when you go into the motorsports motorsports realm of things. It's anything anyone can imagine. And then you take the different aspects of it as to what can we do with this? How can we use it? Can we pull it? Can we race it? Can we mud drag it? Can we jump it? Sure. Bring it on. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I see uh, Ryan's gears over there grinding right now. He's thinking about putting that motor in his BMX bicycle. Actually, I was thinking about my little power wheel I have from when I was like eight years old. Figuring out a way to put like, you know, a motorcycle engine in that or Just something. throw nitrous on it. <laughs> <laughs> the sad thing is you'd see me getting all ready, and then I'd hit the little button, and you'd still see me getting ready, but the thing would just be like... Out from under you. Yep. I'd just be like, where am I going? Oh. Well, that falls into play because it's called <laughs> ghost riding. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'll just ghost ride my whip, you know. Hey, there we go. Funny thing is, is back east, they actually have them uh, power wheels downhill racing where they take the actual electric motor out of them. And the dudes go up on top of the hill oh, and geez. side by side racing the Barbie Jeeps <laughs> down the hill. With no motor? No motor in it. It's just coasting. But the dudes actually have helmets on, and you see the guys flipping them. I watched several of the YouTube videos on that, and it was pretty funny. Mind you, no brakes either. Yeah. That reminds me of when I was a little kid, no joke, when I was a little kid, uh, the Soapbox Derby track out here, the Salem Soapbox oh, yeah. Derby track, they had a, they weren't powered, they were big wheel. They were like big wheel racing. Remember those old, when you were a little kid, those little tricycles, the plastic like tricycles that had the big, huge wheel and they take front, the pedals off of and them. And you take the pedal off, and you sit there, and you start at the top of the track and just, wow, well, maybe not the top, but like three quarters of the way up. And you just coast down that thing and, oh, man. <laughs> Gives me flashbacks. Oh, Travis Pastrana tried that into the backflip pit. And that ended poorly. <laughs> oh, the guy yeah. from Nitro Circus? Yeah. yeah. I, I think old Chops took the, took the blow of that <laughs> adventure. Um, I'm sure a viewer somewhere will correct me on that. It wasn't that. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, so, to me, it seems like you got some pretty interesting stuff coming up for next year. Yeah. And I'm excited to actually find out more about it. And I do. Watch it and we'll, help you out. 
we'll be getting it all squared away pretty soon. Uh, just kind of waiting to see how all the cards lay. Um, with with starting a new business, as anyone can imagine, there's there's some trials and tributes and challenges and successes, but. Um, I'm I'm happy to say that we're moving forward. I'm I'm gonna do something more and fully intend on two events for next year, whether they're both in sublimity or not. That's in here here nor there at this point. Um, one thing I've been trying to do and haven't been able to um, is a Toys for Tots fundraiser. It's the Toys for Tots program is a Marine Corps based foundation. Um, it takes quite a bit to get into the Toys for Tots program. And what I would like to do is an event in the fall to raise more toys for the Toys for Tots program and use the Toys for Tots program as an admission fee or partial admission fee. Okay. Have to be able to cover the cost of facility and so on and so forth. But um, really bring it home for the kids. Um, I'm very family based with with my adventures. I, if we can't do something for the kids, there's no point in doing it. Um, with my events, my event so far, Friday night was 100% family based. And anybody that was there fully realized that. We do uh, an autograph session for the kids prior to the show and for the adults and the dads to go look at, hey, well, whoa, what, what do you got there? <laughs> what did you, you put together? But it's primarily for the kids to go meet the drivers of the trucks. And within that, we did a free kid zone and fully intend on doing a free kid zone for years to come. Um, Saturday night is about paying the bills, is what it is. But as far as Friday night goes, we're going to keep it family based. I'm, I'm going to push that fact as hard as I can and keep it that way as long as I can, as long as I can stay in business. Friday night will always be about the family. Just no way, no way, no how, no different. Um, and I know we all work Monday through Friday. It is what it is. But if we can get the families out there on Friday night and get the next generation involved in motorsports gradually, yeah. the sports will live on forever. Um, but back to the Toys for Tots program. There was a company years ago that did tough truck events annually at the end of November, early December. They were involved in the Toys for Dots program. It was half off admission if you could bring a toy. I would love to do the same thing. And there's a company that I'm working with and we'll probably do events locally to bring toys in for the Toys for Tots program. Nice. And they're, they generally donate the toys back into low profit families or low income families, I should say, um, so that they can have the Christmas they need to have. And that's just above and beyond an amazing cause. And that's where I'd like to be, it's helping things like that. No, that's really cool. I mean, that giving is. back to the kids and the community and everything, that's really cool. I mean, like, the Friday and Saturday nights, I race for Justin out there in Sublimity. I actually liked your pit parties, which is a autograph session. If your viewers don't know what a pit party is, it's where us, the drivers, get out and out actually autograph. That was actually fun. And it's like, most of my autographs I give out was because which I know you've probably seen, I got Bigfoot all over my samurai because oh, yeah. I'm a big fan of Bigfoot. And the kids are like, oh, are you Bigfoot racing? I'm like, I have nothing to do with the monster <laughs> truck. I go by Sasquatch <laughs> racing. And so, yeah, like all my autographs was my name, Donnie, and then Sasquatch racing samurai team. 
And it's just like kids fell in love with Sasquatch on Side My Samurai. Which is awesome. Uh, it, any Anything you can do to relate to the kids. Yeah. It, it gets them involved in it. it. It keeps them attentive of what's going on. And it helps the sport. Uh, and it, it can't hurt. These, uh, the next generation I feel sorry for. And on a sidebar note, 90% of the stuff we did growing up, you're not allowed to do anymore. You can't go up in the woods and play. All the roads are blocked off. So much influence now is towards drugs. And it's social influence. And it's horrible. Mm -hmm. If we can get their attention on something else, things that are loud, things that are exciting, they're attention grabbers. This is great. This is amazing for the youth. Um, I wish it would grow. And we'll see if it does, but we'll go from there. But to be able to use Sasquatch Bigfoot as an attention grabber, that's awesome. I don't know if Ryan actually knows how I met you or not. I actually <laughs> met Justin down in Albany for it was a car show, but we had to rock crawlers, and they had car fresh crush and all that that we didn't make it over. Which, which is a which is a birthday party event. Yeah, it's for a kid. Yeah, it's really? Angie's. Oh, you gotta help me here. It's uh, a lady named Angie out of Albany, but her son passed away due to a childhood disease, and so every single year, she hosts this big boys toys That's big awesome. boys toys being anything from fire trucks police cars trash trucks tractors race cars rock crawlers and that's how I actually met Justin because I was in the restroom at the time when he come by <laughs> to find me so he talked to my wife and she said oh he should be out in a minute and when I got back Justin was actually still there so I talked to him and he's like hey I'm hosting this uh, thing out in Sublimity top truck challenge kind of thing. And I thought about it and I'm like, you know what, Sc screw it. If I break my sign, I'm gonna break it for the fans, the kids. And pretty much Saturday night, that's what happened. I broke my stuff for the fans. But that's how I met Justin, it's through an actual kids event that's really from a kid that passed away. That's unfortunate. In the circumstance, but the, the circumstances aren't great. But the event itself, I mean, that's that's awesome. I mean, that's such a cool thing. Yeah. Well, and what I'd done, um, they were and not to self promote by any means on this note, but they they needed some raffle items, and I don't think you know this, but the main reason I went down there, I dropped off ten family four packs of tickets for them to send through the raffle to raise money for Angie to be able to do this again in the future. That's cool. Um, it was something I heard on the radio. I was like, I, you know what, this sounds awesome. This is right up my avenue for what I'd like to see happen in the future. And I went home and I told my girlfriend, she, she was like, what are you doing as I'm pulling all these tickets out and I'm stamping them for the free free pass and I'm sticking it in well she goes what are you doing so I'm putting them together for Angie's big it's Angie's big boy toys birthday bash yeah. that's what it's called took me a minute to come up with it um, I put 10 family four packs together they auctioned them off it, from what I understand they brought in a pretty good tally for for the foundation which is awesome I'm more than happy with it, and that's the least I could do to support something that is for the kids. That's really it's all cool. for the kids. Yeah. If if I could give the shirt off my back for the kids and make it do good, I'd do it. But I don't think anybody wants to see that, so <laughs> we'll just keep it up. <laughs> probably like Sasquatch. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> Who knows? He'll be like, ah, what's he doing? <laughs> well, that actually almost kind of sounds, I mean, not too similar, but kind of reminds me of the, what was it, like two years ago now, maybe three, when you did that one event where 
they have were supposed to have monster trucks, but they didn't show up. And Donnie got on the phone last minute and called up all of his four wheeling friends. And they're out there. Donnie was in his samurai, and they were all trying to crush cars and r drive over cars. And it's pretty cool. Yeah, that was actually for the night night of fire, which is down in Lancaster at the People's Church. No, oh, okay. Um, yeah, they had a couple monster trucks from up in the Gresham area that said they'd be here, but they didn't bother show. So they had all these nice looking junk cars out there that needed to be ran over. <laughs> and a couple of my buddies actually did squash the cars. Yeah. But unfortunately, my samurai broke that day too. Couldn't, couldn't quite get her done. Nope. Eh, you know what? It's it's a valiant effort at that. Yeah. That's. Yeah, but when the cars are almost as tall as a samurai. Hmm. Yep, very true. Very I'm true. Just not saying. I only got twenty nines on it. <laughs> I mean, really haven't did anything to it, but it's fun doing it. No, it was really cool. Did a little dirt ramp. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we like. Thank you for coming, you know. Uh, well, I appreciate you having me. Yeah, thank you, man. It's time to wrap up. and But don't take off because I want to talk to you after you're off camera. Sure. I got something special for you. <laughs> oh, whoa. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you get to take a ride home with you tonight. If you need your lawn mowed, weeded. No. Ryan's a man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Do I look like I do any of that? Uh, well, <laughs> hey again, now, back here again. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we just like thank you for actually sponsoring my TV show, man. You really you helped you. us out. It's a pleasure. And we're looking forward to being able to help you out next year with your events coming up. You yeah. can count me in 100% on there. Yeah, I'm same boat as him, man, 100%. And we've already talked about it. stuff that I won't mention on camera that we're going to do for you at no cost. So I'm looking forward to. 2017 actually work with Justin yeah it's gonna be great man it's gonna be a lot of fun but yeah so we're gonna go ahead and end our show um once again thank you for spending an hour with us okay. it was awesome talking to you getting to know you more yeah, and TV viewers time. actually getting to know about your company and all that real quick though one more time what was your website in case they want to go check it out www.loan L O N E Entertainment E N T E R T A I N M E N T dot com. Perfect. Yeah, so T V viewers go look up his uh internet site and stuff and even you can find him on we'll, Facebook, stop buying him a we'll like. We'll get we'll get the video of Donnie's run on there soon. <laughs> I I think I know who's string to pull. I see. Maybe maybe Black I got the one with the Oompa Loopa song. <laughs> All right, is this like blackmailing on TV now or what? <laughs> uh, we'll no, Don't full forget. example of the course. Don't hey, forget. Uh, they, we've been talking about it. They want to see it. But you got to remember, it's an eight-hour walk from Salem to Eastern Oregon. <laughs> oh man, I think uh, the video got deleted somehow. <laughs> Darn. Sorry, guys. Nah, the video will be posted. I'll make sure Ryan gets to Justin. So Justin, get up on the website. On his Facebook also, so people can listen to the Oompa Loompa song. But, anyways, uh, thank you for tuning in and watching us. Until next time, don't forget, we got the uh, Honda Road Trip coming up this weekend. We're taking off Saturday morning early. Really, a bunch of uh, interesting stuff coming up for that. It's going to be great. So, until next time, guys, thank you. See you later. <laughs>